In this video, I will show you how to add the Loom extension to your Chrome browser, as well as the basics of using Loom to screen record. Before we begin, make sure you are using the Chrome browser. On your device, make sure you click on the icon that looks like this to launch your Chrome browser. Next, you want to make sure your Google account is synced in your Chrome browser. Please watch our video on how to do that. Once you have synced your account, come back to this video. After syncing your account, visit loom.com. Click on Get Loom for free. Next, sign up for Loom using Google. Make sure you are using your MyLUSD account. You may then get a pop-up asking which account to use. Please select your MyLUSD account. You will then be asked what you will use Loom for. Make sure to select As a Teacher and then continue. Next, make sure to select Install Extension under Chrome Extension. You will then be taken to the Chrome Web Store. Here, instead of Remove from Chrome, you will see Add to Chrome. Please click on that to install the extension. If you get a pop-up prompting you to add the extension, please select to do so. Next, you want to make sure to pin the extension. To do that, click on the puzzle piece here at the top of your browser. Scroll down to Find Loom and make sure to click on the push pin to make that push pin blue. That will pin the extension up here at the top of your browser. You may then see this option prompting you to give Loom access to your microphone and camera. Please select One Click Access. If you get a pop-up asking for permission for your microphone and camera, click Allow. To use it, make sure you are on the website or slide deck you wish to record. Next, click on the Loom extension in your Chrome browser. As you can see, I have the option to record my screen and the camera. This means it will record whatever is displaying on my computer screen as well as record me from my webcam. You can move this to wherever you would like on the screen. I like to keep it in a corner. And you can also resize it. I also like to keep it at the smallest size possible. If you just want to record your screen, click Screen Only. This will then remove the webcam recording from here. And you can change your photo by clicking here. You can then opt to take a selfie by clicking this camera. Or if you wish to upload your Bitmoji or a picture you have of yourself on your device, click on the Upload Photo to select a picture. If you don't want this displayed at all, click on this X up here. Next, you have the option to record your full desktop. And this is great if you will be showing students how to navigate between tabs or windows. Or you can choose to record just the tab that you are displaying. When you are ready to record, click Start Recording. As you can see, you get a countdown. And it is now recording what is displayed on my screen as well as my voice. If you are showing a slide deck, you can just navigate using your arrows or your cursor. To pause, come down here to the control menu and click pause. When you are ready to resume, click play. A note of caution, please do not click this X as this will cancel your recording and you will have to start over. So it is now continuing to record my screen as well as my voice. And when I am ready, I will click this check mark. Let me now show you what it would look like if I would have selected full desktop. Allowing me to choose either to record my entire screen or an application window. I make my selection, click share, and then the process is the same as before. Show that you are finished recording, you will then be taken to Loom. So, click here on settings. As you can see, everything is turned on by default. If I do not want viewers to comment on the video, I would turn this off by clicking here. Emoji reactions means that viewers can click on emojis as they watch the video to react to the video. Animate that it will show a GIF preview of what was recorded. If you want to turn that off, click here to turn it off. Select to turn it off so viewers do not see the selection at the end of the video 
to start using Loom. I also download the video, so I will turn that off. And they also don't need to see the analytics. So I will turn that off as well. When I have finished with my settings, I will click Save. If you recorded a website or slide deck, it automatically gets the title of that website or slide deck. To change it, click on the title, hit your delete or backspace key, and give your recording a title. Add into a folder. To do that, I'm going to click Move to Folder. As you can see, I do not have any folders yet. So to create a new folder, I want to click Create New Folder. Folder. Hit the Enter or Return key so that my folder is titled. As you can see, since I just created that folder, it is selected. So I can now choose whether I want this video to be in my videos or Unit 1, Chapter 1 or I can create another folder and put it in that one. Once I've made my selection, I will click Move. So you can see I get a pop-up confirmation letting me know it is in that new folder. And I see that folder titled here. If I need to cut anything out from my video, I click on these scissor icons to trim things out. So I want to click Start Trimming. Anything that is within these two bars here will get cut out. So one recommendation I have for you here is to click play so that you can actually hear and see your video so that you can ensure you are trimming out or cutting out the area you wish to cut out. If I'm certain that this is the piece I want to remove from my video, I would click down here, remove. To remove another piece of the video, I would follow the same process. Start trimming, move these bars to where I want to trim out part of the video. Again, you may want to hit play so you can hear and see your video and make sure that is the area you want to remove, and then click remove again. If I realize that is not what I wanted to remove, I would click undo here, and as you can see, those bars have now been removed, showing me that the video is back intact in that area. When I am ready to publish my changes, I would click Publish Changes. Note that if you wish to edit those trimmings or revert back to your original video, you can do so by clicking on the scissor icon and clicking on the section that you trimmed out. You can click Edit Trim to make that trim smaller or larger. Or if you wish to revert back to your original video, select Revert to Original. Note that if you do that, all of your trimmings will be removed. When you are ready to share your recording, come up here to the right hand side and you want to ensure that the privacy is set to link sharing. Only people with the link can see your video. Next, you want to select copy link. So you can see I got the confirmation that the link was copied. I can then insert that link into an email into Aries Communication, into a website, or into my Google Classroom so that my students or their parents' guardians can view the video. Here's what it would look like to viewers. Know that your viewers do not need to have a Loom account to view your video. This is what they would see when they would click on the link. They would see the title as well as who recorded the video and when. As you can see, they do not have the option to download the video since I removed that option from the settings and they also don't have the ability to comment or see the analytics as those were turned off in the settings. They do, however, have the option to react to the video with these emojis. To watch the video, they would simply click play and they can choose to react with emojis and they can add their name so you know who reacted with that emoji. As the creator of this video, I can now see that there has been one total viewing of the video and I can then see how they reacted with the emojis while watching the video. So those are the basics of recording with Zoom. Should you have questions, please email us at digitalcoaches at mileusd.org.